Now, here it is. This is the truth behind the beef with Adam LaRue and the Chicago White Sox. Everybody's talking about this. This is the most noise the White Sox has had in a long time. Now, let me be fair and state this right here. Growing up on the south side of Chicago, I could see the White Sox Comiskey Park outside of the window of the Robert Taylor Homes as a young child. And for some reason, my parents seemed to believe that I was a White Sox fan. I liked Harold Banks. That was it. You know, Carlton Fisk was on the team. I think he was alright. But mostly it was Harold Banks. That's the person I related to the most. Other than that, the team sucked. I was a Cubs fan. Because when I was growing up, the Cubs was contending. They was going up against San Diego. They were going places. But Southside felt like this is our team. Because they here. Right here in the ghetto. Kaminsky Park. But it's not. It's really over the bridge. <laughs> where it's a bunch of racist white people in Bridgeview. Where Mayor Daly was from. So that's where the stadium was. We were actually across the street. Totally segregated. But let's stick to the point. I hate the White Sox. Hate them with a passion. I love my Cubs. So if this sounds a little biased, this may be biased. At all the times you said, man, that's biased. This might be biased. Because I don't like the White Sox. <laughs> And it, it's fitting that they have the same owner that owns the Chicago Bulls, who I also hate. And because I don't like the organization. I think he's very demeaning when it comes to African Americans and don't understand their worth. And it's been known for a lot of things that happen here. When you don't want to pay Michael Jordan. What, well, I mean, come on, what does that say? I'm not even a Bulls fan, and I know that's stupid. Now, going back to this situation here. Last season, the White Sox had one of the worst seasons they've had in a long time. They got beat six ways to Sunday. And the Cubs soared. So when that happens, Sox fans go into dismal effect because they didn't see this happen. Now, Adam LaRoche's son who has become the big spectacle of this whole thing that took place and his son always was in you know every, every time he was in the locker room he's in the batting practices he comes to the game and this wasn't a problem all last season he was there with his fox with his son all the home games he's right there in the locker room, his his uh, 14 year old son. If I'm not mistaken, the son is 14 years of age, and he's not a problem. Whatever he comes to the games and whatever, and there's no problems. He wasn't like a, this is a bad kid. He's affecting us, but when you're losing organization. You put the GM in a compromising situation. Now, what I mean by compromising is that everybody's going to either want to bring their kids now to the game every day and bring them in the clubhouse. And the way the White Sox handled it was not probably the way that the way it should have been done and what I mean like there's a, a easier blow I think they could have done to where the respect level would have had him still stay around meaning that Kenny Williams who is African American is the general manager of the White Sox he sometimes don't know how to talk to people. He don't know how to talk to the press. He don't know how to say it. The way he told it to the press is exactly the way he told it to the player. 
That's the best way to put it. And it's not good. And he's made this mistake numerous of times with other players. And basically, he's trying to tell LaRoche, uh, we're not saying Drake can't come to the clubhouse. And he was like, Drake, the, the artist? No, no, your son Drake. <laughs> He can't, we're not saying he can't come here no more. We're just saying it'd be a good idea if he stayed at home. <laughs> no. What Kenny told him is like, instead of saying like, um, you know, listen, a um, couple of players, you know, not that they're complaining, but, you know, they think afraid to swear and do things that they normally would do or talk about because there's a kid present, you know all of the time so you know we'll kind of work on how we're going to bring him into the clubhouse we can't keep bringing him in every day you know what 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 job allows you to bring your kid to work every day you know and we can't have that here you know it was just the way he told it to him it wasn't an embracing fact it was more abrasive like um yeah next season you know drake we love him he's not a problem kid at all but we can't have him here every day. We just want to limit his uh, appearances in the clubhouse. And it was done in a disrespectful way. Now, Adam LaRoche was livid. Because he's like, why wasn't this a problem last year? If it wasn't a problem last season, and he was here all the time, why is it a problem now? But see, Adam LaRoche, I would have gave him some tough love right then and there on the spot. And that's why I'm not a GM. Because I'd have told him flat out. I'm like, look, you suck. Last year you batted 200. You know, a DH batting 200 who played and started most of the games. I mean, like, get serious. You bet 200, got like 12 home runs, a couple of RBIs. But look, look. You're scheduled to, and you talk about leaving and retiring. He just said the Chicago White Sox $13 million. Because he's like, I'm walking away from the game. The reason why he walked away from the game is ain't nobody going to pick him up. He's 36 years old. His best years was like four years ago when he won a Golden Glove. He's done. This is probably his last deal anyway. But to walk away from $13 million? You're a fool. He's a fool to walk away from $13 million. Your son would just have to sit his spoiled self at home. Everybody else got kids too. They can't bring their kids to, to the clubhouse every day. And it was like, well, we should have kids. No, 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 no. I understand that. If I'm at work, I don't want to be tripping over people's kids. Hey, what's this? Oh, I'm bringing my daughter in every day. She's going to be here every day now running around with the stapler. It's cute for a day or two, but then you can't talk about certain things. You know, you got kids around. You can't move around. It's just certain people I know that wasn't comfortable with it. And I don't blame them. So in this situation, I went ownership. Which is a shot. But I am completely with ownership. You need to sit down, shut up, get your check, and take that $13 million. Now you're going to get an organization $13 million. Ryan's going to do nothing but clap. So what do y'all think? Y'all let me know. I know the White Sox suck and it's just a local problem. Because, you know, they're local. <laughs> Don't nobody really care about them. But uh, tell me what you think. Should he have played this season and got $13 million for being a no-show? And then he could have went into retirement? Or you think this little statement thing he was doing... It's just overblown and that the White Sox should have let the kid come in every day. They just they didn't say he couldn't come in at all. They just wanted to limit the amount of times he can come to the clubhouse. And this everyday thing had to stop. What y'all think?